Hi y'all, so I was getting ready to do some brush painting on one of my um, pieces of paper here that I'm working on a project. I'm working on a book called Wound Wisdom. I'm gonna be doing Lindsay in uh, Mexico this year on that. And also I will be leading an artist retreat with another artist friend of mine, Celia Fulton Walden. And um, we'll be in the South of France um, there'll be seven days of art making and brocanti and flea market shopping and um, this part of France in Toulouse. It's a small village outside of Toulouse, France, where the Mary Magdalene cave, cave is and so much of the divine feminine sacred waters and all that is going on. And I've been working on this book project, Womb Wisdom, where I'm doing a limited edition and that's what the retreat in Mexico is. So this opportunity fell into my lap to lead this artist retreat. And I'm telling you, it's just divine because I can add so much of that, um, of my knowledge of archaeology and uh, ancient cultures and symbols by exploring those, um, that region with um, a group of artists that, that you know, decide they want to come along and join me and Celia on that journey. It's going to be awesome. I can't, that's going to be so much fun. It's going to be the third week in July. So I'll be putting out more information on that on my platforms. But in the meantime, I'm actually working on my concepts for this book right now. This is what I'm doing in my studio. And I was getting ready to fill this whole page up with brush um, mark making, what's the, my intuitive scripting. And I thought, wow, why don't I just come do a session with you guys and sort of show you my favorite brushes and um, what I use and why. So I have a few different things here. Um, I pulled these out because these are these large Zen pens. Totally cool. I bought these um, about eh, six months ago or so and totally love them they're really cool so i'll show you the marks they make these are my brushes these are my sacred brush collection right here these are all handmade bamboo with um by an uh an artist up in um portland oregon look at that it even still has a little thing on it these brushes are like um uh about 15 16 years old they all are handmade. These are just the best. I'll be working with this one this morning, but they're just yummy. The lines that they make are incredible and they wear so well. I mean, you know, I use these brushes all the time and they just come back nice and soft and fluffy. I think these are elk hair and deer hair. Um, that he uses in them. They're all environmental. Like he doesn't have to kill the animal to use the hair. So, um, and then, so we'll be, so this is the premium group here. These over here are like a lot of the ones that you can find most places. This is a long haired one. This is actually pretty decent over what you can find. Um, the hairs on these are not that bad, but yet they're still not as good as this by any means. These are like larger ones I use if I'm just making very large, very big, you know, um, swaths of, of ink. This one, um, I haven't used this one actually. I recently got this one, but this one has worked pretty well over the years. Um, so these are for like when you're doing, want to do really big marks and I'll, I'll show you some of those down the road. I'm not going to be using those today. And then, you know, you can get some really inexpensive ones. These are the mostly the ones that you find at the art supply store. They pretty much look like this right here. And they're just, they're just cheapos. I mean, they're okay to use for quick, but the quality of the line is just not nearly the same as, as these right here. So, but you can get these, you can play with them. You know, um, obviously they're going to definitely make that brush making mark. So that part is cool. I just wanted to show you that there is a difference in the quality of the brushes. And so if you have the opportunity if you like doing this kind of thing and you're really looking for some good brushes, when you come across um, the handmade ones, and I'm going to try to find this guy and link it in the video. I haven't seen him in years. Um, he used to come to a lot of the shows that I did. I used to do a lot of shows um, for my um, 
my um, stationary lines. I did the New York stationary show, you know, Atlanta, San Francisco, stuff like that. And I would see them at the shows and I would buy brushes. These brushes are anywhere, like 15 years ago, they were anywhere from like 40 something for this one up to a hundred and something for this one. It just depends, um, but I love them all. So um, I'm hooked. So I'll be using, I did want to explain the brushes, the difference in brushes. So that'll have a lot to do with the quality of the line. But we're gonna use this little one today. Um, a little coffee there. So I'm using my Sumi ink. Um, this is, you can just, this is the one I use, um, but I use all different ones. You can get Indian ink. You can get, um, you know, I find that the Japanese inks are blacker. They, they just definitely are designed for this type of brush mark making versus a, um, a quill pen, you know, like this is obviously you use, you can, you can use this ink, but this a thinner uh, ink flows better with this pen. Um, versus this here and vice versa. Okay. So basically, you know, I just load my brush and uh, with me with my intuitive scripting, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of in a meditative state. I just go with the flow. And I'm going to use this as a background paper to do some um, photocopier art that I'm showing uh, my uh, students over in my studio school. We're working on, I'm single-handedly, I'm telling you, I'm gonna revive the art of photocopy. <laughs> I love it. With a twist, because nowadays we, you know, we have accessibility to, um, to color copy so much easier. When photocopying art was like, you know, a trend, it was a genre back in the 80s and early 90s. You know, you had, of course you had color copiers, but most people had access to the black and white copies and color copies were like premiums, you know. So, you, you know, you did a lot of it in black and white um, and you add the color with, you know, paints and inks and stuff like that. So. What's nice is that, you know, we each can have, you know, a, a color copier in our studios for as little as a hundred dollars, right? The one I use wasn't more than a couple hundred dollars when I bought it new. And I think now you can buy it for around a hundred easy. So um, it makes it a very affordable art form. And it really does expand the, your expression, the way you can work with your jelly prints, with um, any of the work that you create in your studio. You know, you could isolate parts of the work and use that, you know, imagery. So, so I'm feeling, this is what I normally do. I fill up a page with this scripting and, uh, and then I'm going to use this a lot in my foot. I have this idea where I'm going to be, um, let me show you. I have this image here that I blew up. <laughs> Um, this one and this one. So I, these are images that I created and then I just really blew them up just to really kind of get the pixelation and the dotting of the original work. These are some jelly prints that I did. And so what I'll ultimately do is when I go to photocopy this, this one too. So this has a lot of um negative space in it as well. So when I go to layer these, this image will be underneath this image um, in the in the layering process. And it's really cool. It'll, you know, it just does some really nice stuff. So what I'm working on is that, and so I'm making these, this image, I was printing this for that. So I thought I'd share it with you because you guys asked me a lot about my intuitive scripting and what have you. So basically I wanted just to do a quick run on the, the tools, the differences in some of the tools. So you won't sort of be in the dark about that. So when you run out and get brushes, you'll know they do different things. Try to, when you get your brushes, only use them for ink. Don't use them in acrylic because acrylic will start grouping them up and it'll stick the bristles together and then they won't operate as well. And then I'm going to show you here. 
I'll, I'll use um, this is some calligraphy paper and I'll show you the difference in the lines in the calligraphy paper. So I'll, I'll pull, do I have, I'm trying to show you the smaller ones. Like here, this is a smaller brush right here that I use just for ink. It's one of the, you know, the cheaper ones. This one is the, the low Cornell. You'll find this a lot at the art supply store. So this is a good one to show you the difference in the mark making. So we'll do one thing here. You can also use the brush pens. They definitely have a different line to them. I love this. Love my intuitive scripting. I've been doing this for years and I just, it just speaks to my spirit. So that's one. I mean, I normally have a brush pen here. Do I have one? This is a Japanese calligraphy pen. It's sort of like a brush pen, but it's going to be more of a pen type. So it's a little dull too, but you get the idea of the kind of line that it will make like that. I do have my other brush pen here. I'm going to just dip it a little bit of ink because it takes a while to get this going. So as opposed to spending time trying to get it going, I'm going to just cheat. And as opposed to using the ink in the cartridge, I'm going to, hold on, I just got to clean this off. I'm going to use, oops. I'll use the, um, see, this is an ink pen. This is a hoo hoo. Oh, who, who, I think it's O, it's O-H-U-H-U. -H -U. So it has a cartridge in it and it's really cool. It's great for traveling with it and what have you. But sometimes it takes a minute to get the flow in the barrel going. So I'll just dip this in uh, my ink here and it'll give you an idea what the line looks like. Wait a minute, I can tell this something's not right here. Let me just clean this, this tip has got Hold up. Okay. It's got a, a completely different kind of point on it. So, so this is what this is going to create line wise. You can see this, the differences in them. Like I said, I'm dipping it. It has its own ink well, but I didn't get it started before the video, so I don't want to waste time showing you guys that. Okay, so that's of the brush pen concepts. So if you come across a brush pen, it's another way of approaching it. This is now, so this was this. A special little pen. Then we used a calligraphy brush pen. Um, this is more of a felt tip calligraphy, the uh, felt tip. This is the brush pen here. So now this one is one of the, it, it's a calligraphy pen, but it's a, it's one of the inexpensive ones. I mean, this may run you four or five dollars. And so this is what this line is going to look like. Kind of getting it loaded properly. So, so it's a thicker point, of course, but you see, you're kind of getting a, a completely different line. You know, it doesn't have the same elegance, like on, see this, like this, the stroke, it doesn't have the same thin elegance of the stroke, <clears throat> even though it's the same hand creating it, but it's still good stuff. So, see, it's still good stuff. And if you get the, the thinner it is, the more, the thinner the line would be. So that's this one. So that's our, I'm going to do this without, well, I'll just put it over here right now because I don't want the ink everywhere. And then let's do our brush. Let's do these um, Zen pens. So I want you guys to see that these are pretty cool. Okay. 
So these are out of bamboo. And so you see you're getting more of a, um, you know, you're not getting a, um, if I properly loaded this up, like if I really dip this down in, I don't have a lot to dip it down in right now. It would um, make a different line. But I like this because not only can I just make lines with it, which are cool, you know, for mark making. I use this pen a lot for that, for mark making. And I'll show you what the fat one looks like. See, I'm not really getting this. Let me just do it like this. I'm not really getting this up to the well of the... Um, I don't have a bottle I can just dip this in. I normally I have my open lid because you have to kind of get it up to where, see where that dot is on there? So it's like traditional things. I need to really get the ink up into that dot because that well holds it and then it drains down into the, but this is just a wider mark. So I'll just show you. See, it's gonna be a little wider when it's full it's wider than this one, but basically the same mark made. And I really like these when you use them properly. I'm not actually probably doing the best job of showing you this. I just don't have a bottle. My open top bottle is down in my other studio. So, cause I normally have a wide mouth ink as well. This one is one that squirts out. So this top doesn't come off. It just has like this little here to pour the ink out. And I like this because it doesn't spill. It, it's really a lot more contained, but um, anyway, so just just a quick little tutorial on the different lines, the different brushes make, what I use in my studio. I really like the quality of these brushes, but you know, we can, you can use any of them. And, um, so hopefully that kind of answers some of your questions about what I use for my intuitive scripting and how I sort of get the brush, the brush mark lines that I do in my work and what I recommend. So, you know, go out and get yourself one of these right here. You're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's only a few dollars and you get a nice line there. So there you have it. Alrighty. So thanks again and happy creating. And I'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.